Thank you very much. Uh, first, I'd just like to say it's an honor to be here today and to be introduced by Ralph Miller. Ralph was one of the founding members of the National Football Players Association and helped blaze a trail that has helped NFL players and, and is now giving hope to college athletes across the nation that they too can improve their conditions. I'm looking forward to telling you a little bit about our union, Kappa. But first, I'd like to thank President Lee Saunders and Secretary Treasurer Laura Reyes for inviting me here today. And more importantly, for all they've done to improve the lives of not only their members, but for helping people like us who want to be part of the labor movement. And on behalf of Northwestern football players and college athletes across the nation, I want to thank all the ASPE members who sent messages of support, encouraging words, and even offers to help. You don't know how much that means to us, and I just wanted to thank you today. In 1995, I was a freshman football player at UCLA. And during my first season, my All-American teammate, Donnie Edwards, was on a radio show talking about what it was like to be a college athlete. Donnie said that he was grateful for his scholarship, but for some reason, the scholarship check didn't cover his basic necessities. And in fact, he didn't have any food in his refrigerator. And he went home after the show and found that there were some groceries sitting on his doorstep, left anonymously, which he ended up eating. And somehow the NCAA found out, and when they found out, they suspended him. And meanwhile, they're selling Donnie's jersey in stores across the nation. I found out years later that the NCAA caps every full athletic scholarship in the nation below the price tag of the school, leaving unsuspecting players with about three dollars to $5,000 per year in out-of-pocket expenses. Later that year, I was informed by the NCAA that it prohibited UCLA and all other colleges from paying for sports-related medical expenses during summer workouts. The players on my team were more than frustrated by NCAA rules, but we didn't have a voice. But as for me, I'd seen enough. And during my second year, I started a student group with the intention of giving college athletes across the nation a voice and the means to change the NCAA rules. I soon realized, however, that I needed the expertise about how to go about reaching these goals. So I reached out to the United Steelworkers for help, and fortunately for college athletes, they agreed to join our fight. And we've been able to make some progress over the years through various forms of pressure, but despite our efforts and over $1.2 billion in brand new TV revenue coming in every year, the NCAA, conference commissioners, and universities have refused to provide basic protections to college athletes. Today, college, the colleges are not required to pay for any sports-related medical expenses, not one penny. And you can ask former Oklahoma basketball player Kyle Hardrick about that, who was left to pay thousands of dollars in medical expenses from a knee surgery that he, he needed after being injured in practice. You may, you may remember the gruesome injury caught on TV during last year's NCAA March Madness basketball tournament, where Louisville basketball player Kevin Ware broke his leg in half on national television. Louisville was asked whether or not it would take care of any future medical expenses after Kevin's eligibility expired, and his spokesman responded with no comment. By the way, Louisville, the basketball players there generate the highest basketball revenues in the entire nation. Universities are also free to revoke scholarships of players in good standing for any reason, even injury. Former Rice football player Joe Agnew is among many athletes whose scholarships was not honored after he was injured. We've heard the NCAA's rhetoric about how academics is first, but in college sports, the money's first. And that's why graduation rates for football players and basketball players continue to hover around 50%. And the NCAA refuses to use some of its billions of dollars for degree completion. And perhaps most shameful is the NCAA's refusal to implement concussion reform, despite the mounting evidence of severe short-term and long-term health risks. There have been numerous tragedies where former NFL players committed suicide and were later found to have CTE chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is a brain condition linked to contact sports. College athletes face the same risks. Proof of this was found after Penn football player Owen Thomas committed suicide at the age of 21. He was found to have CTE. This tragedy occurred in 2010, yet NCAA sports has still refused to implement common sense protections that the NFL Players Association was able to secure for NFL athletes. 
And despite the national debate on this topic for the last few years, there have been several instances where players were kept in games with obvious concussion symptoms. While playing quarterback for University of Arizona, Matt, Sc Matt Scott suffered two hits to the head in the same play while being tackled in a game against USC. He immediately started vomiting, yet was allowed to continue playing without any examination from his team's medical staff. Robert Woods had a similar experience while playing for USC. After a violent collision, Woods tried to jog off the field but stumbled several yards before falling face first on the ground. It's slow to get up, he began walking towards the wrong sideline, but he was back playing in the same game within minutes. These examples and more were captured on TV. In the midst of mounting evidence, a national dialogue about severe, short and long-term health risks associated with traumatic brain injury. And college athletes continue to face unnecessary brain trauma risks because the NCAA and its universities refuse to act. We reached out to the NCAA and conference commissioners and urged them to act immediately, but we were met with closed doors. Today, the NCAA is being sued over its inaction on concussions. And discovering that lawsuit revealed an internal NCAA email from its enforcement department, the same department that suspended my teammate for eating groceries when he was hungry, the same office that punished Ohio State football players for selling their own bow ring, the same office that investigated Johnny Manziel over whether or not he received a few bucks for signing autographs. The email said that the NCAA would not punish a coach who knowingly put a player with a concussion back in the game and put his health, health at risk. And the NCAA cut straight to the point in its legal defense, which is actually filed in official court documents. And it says, this is a quote, the NCAA has no legal duty to protect student athletes. After years of advocating for college athletes' rights and the NCAA's inaction on concussions, it's become clear to me that public pressure, legislative efforts, and lawsuits are not enough to bring the comprehensive reform college athletes desperately need. These players need more than an advocacy group. College athletes need a union. <laughs> Soon after I concluded this, Northwestern quarterback Kane Coulter came to me because he also believes college athletes need a union. A few months later, with Kane's tremendous leadership and the back in the, of the United Steelworkers, football players at Northwestern Universities made history when they became the first college athletes to assert their rights under labor laws by signing Kappa Union cards. These courageous players sign union cards because college athletes across the nation are subject to an unjust NCAA system that puts them at physical, financial, and academic risk. They sign union cards because universities are free to stick players with medical bills while they shower their coaches with multi-million dollar salaries. They sign union cards because NCAA sports needlessly treats their brains as collateral damage. They sign union cards because players spend 40 to 50 hours per week in their sport and are used as human advertisements for shoe companies but can lose their eligibility for eating groceries when they're hungry. They moved to join Kappa for the same reason you all joined Ask Me, to fight for the, the dignity and protections that you deserve as human beings, as American citizens that work hard each and every day. After they signed the cards, many doubted that we'd win. Well, guess what? Northwestern football players made history again when the NLRB regional director, Peter Sung, or ruled that they are employees with the right to unionize. This historic ruling ends a period of 60 years in which the NCAA knowingly established a pay-for-play system while using terms like student-athlete and amateurism to try to skirt labor laws. You may have read the headlines about Northwestern University's high-pressure anti-union campaign. But the precedent has been set. Regardless of how the vote turns out, we expect the NLRB to uphold the decision, which would give college athletes at private colleges across the nation the right to unionize. Mm -hmm. 
The ruling may even extend these rights to graduate teaching assistants if the NLRB chooses to overturn the Brown decision as part of our ruling. And I'm fully aware that workers' rights are under constant attack in this nation, and college athletes are no exception. After our NLRB ruling, Ohio Republicans passed a state law excluding college athletes from labor law protections, and Republicans in Congress are seeking to do the same. But those who would try to strip away the rights of college athletes and other working Americans are on the wrong side of history. This is America, and we shouldn't have to forfeit our rights as a condition of employment. And for the young people here and across the nation fighting to strengthen workers' rights, take notice of who is challenging this unjust multi-billion dollar industry. Who's making college presidents, conference commissioners try to scramble to defend the indefensible? Who's inspiring people in this country to rethink what is right and what is wrong? It's a small group of 18 to 21 year olds fighting for workers' rights. They stood up, they stood together, and they won. So please continue to stand up, stand together, and the workers in this nation will win. And the progress the progress that Northwestern football players have already made give us reason to celebrate. But this progress wouldn't have been possible without the efforts of the people right here in this room and throughout organized labor who defend workers' rights day in and day out. Without you, those who oppose workers' rights, would have they would have won long ago, and Northwestern football players would have had nowhere to turn for justice. We know that for every news story about our fight, there are countless dedicated activists that are making the movement possible and protecting our rights. So please accept our utmost gratitude for defending workers' rights and for giving us hope. Thank you all for having me today. God bless.